I'm Vicky, welcome back to my channel. In part one of this series I showed you how I made the petticoat and in part two I showed you how I made the big fluffy tulle skirt and in this part I'm going to be showing you how I make the corset to go with the Fortuna gown. I'm starting by making my pattern and I'm going to do a quick twirl mock-up just to make sure I'm happy with the shape and the fit. So I've actually used my pattern that I made for the flora dress and I've drawn a copy of that onto some calico. Um, I'm not going to change the top at all, so I've just left that like it is. I've taken it in at the waist, just on the side seam, so I've taken it in about a quarter of an inch each side. And then I want the shape at the bottom to be very different. So I've brought the centre front down into a point, and then I've got it so it curves up to the side seam here. Um, and at the very side I've got it so it's only about two and a half inches below the waist, because I want the tiny waist and then the big puff of tulle. And then as we get towards the back, I've got it curving down and then it just finishes in a slight curve at the centre back. I've also taken about an inch off the centre back from the pattern that I used for the flora dress because I just want to be able to put it in just that tiny bit tighter. Next, I'm just going to cut the calico out, um, make a copy of my pattern before I sew it together. And then I'm just going to sew it together really roughly and try it on the mannequin. I'm not going to make a full bone toile as you've seen me do in the past. So I just need to check basically that the shape and the fit around this part is how I want it. So here's my quick twirl put onto my dress form with the big tulle skirt. I don't have any boning in it. I know the top part fits fine so I'm not worried about that. The part that I wanted to check was the shape between the waist and the bottom of the corset here and how it sat on the tulle. So I'm really happy with the shape we've got here. I'm just going to shorten it a tiny bit over the hip here just to make a nicer curve. And then I'm just going to shorten it here as well, just to exaggerate the shape down into the point there. And then I'm going to do the same at the back. I'm just going to lose that little angle there so that's more curved down onto the skirt there. When I make this style of dress, I find the most flattering length to do the corset is to have it stopping at one or two, three inches below the waist. Any longer than that, if you start bringing the corset long and then having the chill puff out lower, it can make your torso look really long and your legs look really short. Now I'm happy with the fit of the toile. I'm going to mark those changes on my pattern and I'm going to keep a copy of the pattern because this is a shape that I make a lot. So it's a pattern that I'll use a lot in the future. Once I've made my pattern, I'm then going to cut out my fabric. So I'm going to cut a layer of interface satin basted to a layer of calico. And I'm going to do that twice. So once will be my lining and once will be the outside. This is all the pieces cut out, ready to assemble to make the corset. So for the centre front, I've actually put all four layers together. So I've got the interface satin, two layers of calico, and then another layer of interface satin. Then for the other pieces, I've got a pair of each one, which is the interface satin basted onto my strength layer, which is my calico. I'm going to work from the centre front outwards. So the first thing I'm going to do is stitch my boning channels into the centre front. Then I'm going to attach my side fronts, side backs, and then finally the backs. And I'm stitching the boning channels through all the layers of this corset, and then I'm going to edge it with bias binding. Here's how my corset is looking so far. So I've sewn my boning channels into the front. I've sewn the, these two a little more central than I normally would because I want them to come right down into the point. Then I've got another one in the middle of the, of the front here. Then I've joined my side fronts on. Then I've got boning channels on the seam and in the centre of the side front panel. So next I'm going to show you how I sew each panel on as I do the side back panel. I'm doing all my stitching from this side and because this ends up slightly neater than the other side, this will end up being my lining so that, because the lining will be seen and the other side is going to be completely covered in lace so you're not going to see the stitching there. So to join my side back panel on, the first thing I'm going to do is pin my hanging loop in place. I'm then going to take two pieces at the side back and I'm going to pin them right sides together one side with right sides together. I've then turned it over and I'm going to do right sides together on the opposite side of the corset now. So we end up with three pieces together with the part of the corset that's already sewn sandwiched between them. Once it's all pinned together it looks like this. So you've got right sides together that side and right sides together that side with the edges of all three pieces lined up evenly at the edge here. So next I'm going to sew my seam allowance, which is one and a half centimetres, through all the layers. 
Next I'm going to grade my seams and clip my curves. Now that's done I can open up both sides. Once I open up the two pieces so that they're right sides out it's looking like this. And the next thing I'm going to do is just top stitch through all the layers next to the seam which will hold these open. As I stitch I'm just going to pull both layers sideways to make sure they're opened up properly. Now that's stitched, I'm just going to pin the edges together and then tack them, and then I'll be treating this as one layer going forward. Now that's tacked together, I'm going to stitch my boning channels. I'm going to do one just coming back from the seam and one in the centre of the panel. Then I'm going to join on the other side back and both back panels and then I'll show you how I finish the centre back. To finish the back what I've done is I've turned in my seam allowance on both layers and I'm going to pin them together. Once I've pinned all the way down I'm then going to do a line of top stitching to hold it together at the edge and I'm going to stitch my boning channels with a gap in between them for where the eyelets will go. So this is the corset with all the panels joined together and all of the boning channels sewn in place. So the next thing I'm going to do is insert the boning. So I'm going to use spiral steel boning from the centre front all the way back to here and then my back two on either side are going to be straight steel. Um, now I've shown you plenty of times in other videos how I put my boning in and how I cut it so I'll link to those videos above and in the description. So this is my corset with all the boning in. So I've got my straight steels either side at the back then spiral steels all the rest of the way and I've ended up just putting a tiny bit of straight steel just down the centre front just to help hold the point down. I didn't want to use straight steels all the way up, I've used spiral steels for these two because the straight steels would flatten the curve of the bust just too much. The last thing I'm going to do is hand sew bias binding on the top and the bottom. So I've made this bias binding from the same satin that the corset's made from. I cut a five and a half centimetre wide strip on the bias and then I pulled it through this little gadget to help fold and press the ends under. Um, I always hand sew my bias binding rather than machine sewing it because I like my boning to go right to the edge and if you stop your boning short to put your bias binding on I find that the edges can roll up a little bit. I'm not going to put the eyelets in yet, I'm going to put those in after all the lace is sewn on. Now the corset's finished, it's time to start working with the silver lace to embellish this corset. And I'm also going to be making a cape which is going to attach to the corset as well, which will also be made from this silver lace. This is my pattern for the cape. Um, there's a fold just there, so it's a half circle that then curves up at the front. And this is the part that's going to attach to the top of the side front seam of the corset. Now because the edge of this cape is curved, because the edges of the corset are curved, I can't just use the lace as it is, so the first thing I need to do is cut the two edges, like the deep edge pieces, off either side of the lace, and then I'm going to cut it up, shape it, and then hand applique it back onto the corset and onto the cape as well. I'll put a link in the description to where I got the lace from, and um, they do so many beautiful beaded laces there, you'll find it hard to choose. Um, they seem to have quite small quantities of each one, so whether this exact one will be available still or not, I don't know, but if it's not, there'll be lots of other beautiful things for you to choose from. Now I've got the edges of the lace cut off, I can start pinning them where I want them on the corset. So I've pinned this first piece just at the centre front here, and I want the scalloped edge to line up with the edge of the corset. To get that one to go neatly around that corner there, I need to open this lace up to allow it to spread, just like you do as you were clipping a curve to allow it to spread open. So I'm going to sort of try and find the best bit to cut between, and I can fill in any gaps and um, bits of satin showing afterwards. I'm going to get some loose beads here which I'll have to stitch back on as I sew everything into place, I'll save them all. But you can see as soon as I cut that open, I can get the edges sitting exactly where I want them. So now that part can go that way and this part can go up there and then I can use some off cuts from here or I can cut some more lace from the middle part. So to see if I cut that bit out and put it in there that will fill in that gap really neatly. 
and once it's all sewn on it's going to look like a solid piece of lace um, I do have a video that's specifically about cutting and hand stitching lace appliques and um, I'll link that above and in the description so if you want to see me go into more depth talking about how to do this then go and watch that video and I'm just going to keep on pinning and cutting onto here. I'm actually thinking that's coming down too low so I'm going to lose that scallop there so we don't lose the lovely shape of the point. Maybe I should just finish it and keep the edge really clean. I'm going to do that. I'm not. I'm going to use the scallops on the top, and I'm going to keep that edge at the bottom really neat to keep that nice line onto the chill skirt. So I'm going to unpin this and start from the top instead. All right. So I've unpinned it. I'm going to do exactly the same at the top instead. I'm going to pin along the edge, then cut and. This time, because the curve's going the other way, I'm going to have to cut and overlap this part to fit around the bust curve. So this part that I already cut to go around the hip before I change my mind, you can see as I overlap that cut, it fits really nicely around the bust curve. And once it's sewn together, you won't even be able to tell which bits have been cut and put back together again. Because I've got a lot to overlap just here, I'm actually going to cut some of the excess off. Otherwise it's going to end up really chunky and too overlapped. And that piece I've just cut off, I can use to fill in the gaps. So I'm going to keep cutting and pinning and then I'm going to just use a grey thread to hand sew it all into place. Uh, yeah, go and check out my other video if you do want more information about how I do this part because it goes into detail about how to applique lace and then once all this is on I'm going to do the eyelets again I've got other videos showing you how I do the eyelets or grommets and then I'll be back to show you how I make the cape to make the cape I've cut out two layers of tulle which is the same tulle that I use for the skirt I'm then going to pin and hand sew the lace onto the tulle in exactly the same way that I did with the corset so I'm going to pin it on and I'm going to cut and overlap it to get around the curves until I'm happy with the lace pattern that's on the cake. I'm really happy with the placement of the lace on the cape so now I'm going to hand sew it all into place and this time I'm going to use a clear thread instead of the grey thread because you'll see the stitching on the opposite side. So this is my finished cape with all of the lace sewn on. You can see how much flatter it looks once it's sewn and the joins are pretty much invisible because of the amount of detail there is in this lace. The last thing I need to do is attach it to the corset. So I'm going to pop the corset onto my dress form and pin this where I want it and sew it into place. You could also use hooks and eyes to attach it if you don't want it to be permanently attached to your corset. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and that you click the little bell so you get notified of my new videos. And this isn't the end of this dress. I've also got the crown and all the accessories to make to go with it. So I'll be back soon to show you the next part. And then at the end I'll show you how the whole look comes together. See you soon.